So I want you guys to close your eyes and imagine that you're outside playing on a hot summer day and you have a water bottle full of ice and water. You've been playing for a really long time, you're sweaty, the sun is beating down on you. Think about what has happened when you go to drink that water. What's happened to the ice in that water bottle? So think about that for a minute. So the ice in that water bottle has melted. The ice has changed in back into liquid water. So it's changed properties. It's changed from a solid to a liquid. Today, we are going to be talking about other ways that we can change properties of matter by cutting, sanding, folding, melting, and freezing. Before we talk about how we can change properties of matter, let's first review our properties of matter. So we have size, so small and big, thin and thick, skinny and fat, short and long. We have color, so all the different colors that you see in the world around you. One property of matter is its mass, so how light or heavy it is. It is its shape, so all of our different 3D and 2D shapes. And its texture, bumpy, rough, pointy, smooth, soft, hard. And it's its state solid, liquid, or gas. So when we change matter by cutting, folding, sanding, melting, and freezing, we change their properties, we change their size, we change their color sometimes, and their texture. We change the shape of objects, their mass, and even their state. So we're gonna look a little bit closer at each type of, or each way that we can change Matter. So one way I can change matter is by folding it. So here I have a rectangular piece of paper, that's its shape. And if I start folding it, I can fold the pieces in and fold the corners in. Once I've folded my piece of matter, it's no longer a rectangle. It has changed shape and it's smaller. It has changed size. So when we fold matter, we change, we change its shape and size, it becomes smaller and it changes into a different shape. So another way that I can change matter is by cutting it. So if I have my rectangular piece of paper and I start cutting off pieces all over the place, I can cut it down here. Now look what I've done to my piece of matter. It's no longer shaped like a rectangle. It's got this strange shape and there's smaller pieces here. I have changed the size and shape of my matter again. I have changed it from a large rectangle to all of these different pieces. Some of the pieces are smaller. Now I have a triangle. So when I cut matter, I change not only its shape, but its size as well. So another way that I can change matter is by sanding it. When I sand an object, I use sandpaper. Sandpaper is rough and we use it to sand wood normally, but you can sand other things. You could sand a rock, you could sand chalk, but it changes the texture and sometimes even the color and size of the object that you're sanding. So we're gonna look at an example of sanding so to wood. Sand a piece of matter, I take my sandpaper and I rub it up and down over the object. So in this example, um, someone was rubbing sandpaper over a green piece of wood and look at how that wood has changed. Its color has changed, it's lighter um, because the paint has come off so we've changed its color. And we've also changed its texture. When you sand something, it makes it smoother. It gets rid of any bumps and blemishes. So sanding can change the color of an object, the texture, and if I was sanding something like chalk, it could even change the size. So another way that I can change matter is by melting an object. So when I melt something, I add heat to it. And when I'm melting something, it changes not only its size, but its state of matter. So if I melt a piece of ice, a piece of ice is a solid. It's hard um, and it has a shape. If I add heat and I melt ice, that ice turns into a liquid, so it changes state from a solid to a liquid. It also changes size because it's no longer a, an ice cube. It's no longer shaped like a cube. It is a liquid who do, that takes the size of its container. So when I melt something by adding heat, it changes a, an object from a solid to a liquid, and it also changes its size. The final way that I can change matter is by freezing it. So when I freeze matter, it changes from a liquid to a solid. 
by cooling. So to freeze something, I need to add cool. I need to cool it. So for water to turn into ice, I need to cool it or freeze it, and it changes from liquid to solid. So it's changing its state. So when I freeze something, it changes the object's shape, and it also changes its size. It's no longer liquid. It's in cubes of ice. So now that we've looked at each of the examples of how we can change matter, we have this chart to help remind us. Cutting matter changes its shi shape and size by making it smaller and by changing it maybe from a rectangle to a square or a triangle. Folding changes the matter shape and size as well. Objects get smaller when you fold them and their shape can change from a rectangle to a circle to a triangle or anything else you can imagine. Sanding an object with sandpaper changes its texture to make it smoother. It can change its color and sometimes it can change its size by making it smaller. Melting matter by adding heat changes its state of matter from a solid to a liquid and it changes its size. And finally, freezing matter by making it cooler changes its state of matter from a liquid to a solid and it changes its size. So now you guys are going to do an activity and you're going to change matter by folding it, cutting it, melting it, and freezing it at your own house. 